Well, let's talk a little bit about verbally describing the um, shape as well as center and spread of a distribution for a numeric variable. A quick reminder to subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications when we upload new videos. So we've already talked a little bit about different plots we can make like a histogram or box plot and how these summarize the distribution for a numeric variable. But let's start with um, first verbally describing the shapes we see as well as center and spread and then in following videos we'll get to um, more quantitatively or numerically describing some of these things. So here I've drawn four examples A, B, C, D and they're sort of artificial textbook very nice and neat examples but again to make the discussion easy for now. So first let's go through each, um, each of these here and attach kind of a qualitative or descriptive label to the um, shape. So what we want to think about is the distribution symmetric or skewed. Okay, so looking at this first one here, it looks like a nice symmetric distribution. And by that we mean if we pick a center point in there, it's roughly evenly or symmetrically distributed around that center. And a word we're going to attach to this later on is it looks sort of normal. Okay, or like a bell curve or a normal distribution. Um, that's a topic that's coming up pretty soon. Let's add that descriptive label for now. Now this second example, B here, and it looks fairly symmetric, right? If we look, the center looks roughly there, and it looks pretty evenly or symmetrically distributed around that. First, let's add that word here. It looks pretty symmetrically distributed around its center. And this is one that later is going to get called uniform. Okay, or evenly or uniformly distributed. Okay, so it's symmetric and it's rather being bell-shaped and decreasing. It's fairly evenly distributed around its center. And these two here look um, what we call skewed. Right? They're not symmetric. They kind of tail out strongly um, to one side. This one here is skewed and it's skewed to the right or what also gets positively skewed. Okay, what gets called positively skewed. Now the terminology can be a little bit confusing at first, but we say it's skewed in the direction where it tails out, where the long tail is. So this is skewed towards the right side or towards the positive or increasing numbers. So we'd call this skewed right. And this here, again, looks a little bit skewed and it's tailing out towards the left. So this, we'd say it's skewed to the left or it can be called negatively skewed. Now often it's good to try and think about the shape you'd expect for a distribution of a variable when taking a sample before collecting or exploring the data. So I'm going to give you three examples to think about and um, well let me mention those. So suppose we take a sample and record income of individuals or we record the heights of an adult population or maybe record um, class grades reported as percentages um, again for a class. So it's good to think about what shape would you expect for the distribution of these variables before collecting them? So take a moment to think about that and then I'll get into um, talking about what shape I would expect them to have. When we collect incomes of individuals, these often have sort of a skewed right distribution. That's usually what we'd expect. And this often happens when there's a lower bound. Okay, so incomes, tend to clump somewhere between zero and maybe 50 or 100,000, maybe 150,000 for those who are um, getting paid a little bit nicer. Um, but then it tails out to the words the right, right? There's people making 500,000, 2 million, 10 million, 20 million a year, right? There's fewer of them, right? That's why it tails down. But they often tend to have skewed right distributions. If we think of heights of adults, right? So once people are no longer growing, they tend to have more symmetric distributions, right? There's an average or mean or median height and people are somewhat evenly distributed above and below that. And it often tends to be a bit more normal or bell-shaped. If we think about class grades, now this is a, a tricky one. People often think normal, right, or symmetric. They're actually usually skewed to the left or negatively skewed. Okay, and the reason that happens is grades are bound between zero and 100 and often a class average is uh, depends on uh, how well your class goes, but they're usually in the 70 to 80 range. So definitely the average is usually above 50. So there's usually some average around here and they're capped at 100. There's some really low grades tailing down towards the zero. Okay, so looking at distribution of grades, 
they're actually often um, negatively skewed or skewed to the left. Now, think about symmetric skewed, um, skewed right, skewed left. There's often even more descriptive words that we use, things like exponentially distributed or things like that. So you can take a look at this graphic here and it's going to show a few more examples of other descriptive words that we might use um, to describe the shape of a distribution. Aside from describing the shape of the distribution, we also want to think about some um, measures of location as well as dispersion or variability. The first one we want to think about is the center. Where is the center of the distribution? Again, just looking um, descriptively, we would say for this one it looks roughly there, looks roughly there. For this one, where's the center? Maybe somewhere around here, somewhere around here. Okay, so those are just kind of um, very subjective. We're going to, in following videos, learn about things like the mean, okay, or just what most people know as an average or an arithmetic average, median, and other measures um, of center. Closely related are other measures of location. So things like what's the maximum and the minimum, or things we mentioned when we learned about box plots, what's, say, the first quartile, where it cuts one quarter below, three quarters above. So these are often referred to as measures of location. Percentiles, or what also often gets called quantile. The words are interchangeable for the most part. Some slight differences, but uh, we won't get stuck on that for now. And we also want to think a bit about measures of spread or variability. So again, looking at example A and example B here, they've got roughly the same center, right? So they've got roughly the same mean or median, but we can see here Example B is much more spread out than A, right? Or much more variable is the word we're going to start to attach to that. Right now we're just using descriptive words. B is more spread out or more variable than A, but we're going to start to quantify these using things like standard deviation or variance. So those are topics coming up. Things like the interquartile range, which we've touched on when talking about box plots. In a separate video, we'll more formally define all of these or even just things as simple as the range. What's the span from the maximum to the minimum? In a separate video, rather than using all these kind of descriptive, qualitative type words, we're going to start to quantify um, center and spread a little bit more. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn. Stick around, guys, because we got lots more. My dad is a statistics ninja